Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to do a classic winter botanical painting project. We're going to paint a sprig of holly. So grab your paints and let's get started. I think a lot of people actually find holly a bit challenging um, because you think you know how the leaves go and then well you try to paint them and it doesn't quite go your way so I have come up with a nice sort of little project here um, and we're going to do some holly and we'll do some berries and it'll be a lovely thing to add to your list of things you can paint for festive card making or maybe gifts or wreaths all that kind of thing so I've got here a slightly yellowy green um, mixture of sap green and green gold and we are going to paint in the stem first. Now, um, we're going to have berries clustered at various points. So I'm not going to paint, firstly, I'm not gonna paint this too heavily. So I've got my size zero brush, um, but I'm also going to leave a few gaps for where the berries are going to go. So you can see I'm uh, using some unpainted space to create a bit of a highlight on the branch. Um, the berries tend to cluster at the points where the leaves branch off, so those little areas of pencil, those little branch lines there are where the berries are going to cluster. And um, yeah, that's, that's all we need for the moment. Right then, so a holly leaf. Let's do this one at the top here. I think the most important thing is to give yourself the central line of the leaf. It's really, really helpful. And I'm just gonna get started and paint one of these. I, I don't like to do too much pencil drawing for these because I think it can they can lose some of their some of their charm. Um, and of course holly leaves also they, they do come in a lot of different types are not just always really spiky sometimes you get a much smoother side or a, or a softer spike more of an undulation but what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by using this lighter color and just paint up the middle like that with a size 2 brush and now I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush and I've got sap green mixed with French ultramarine blue here and I'm going to create the spiky edge and quickly clean off the brush, get some water there and get that colour blended from the centre. Now if you're not that speedy you're going to want to use a bigger brush to give you more coverage and now with a more concentrated bit of colour of that greeny blue I'll just go back over the edge so with my greeny blue I'm gonna do the outline again so I go one two three and then in back in there and yeah if I used a slightly larger brush we'd see that I could get the water covering that leaf a little faster because we want to try and avoid too much of a thick uh, clear outline. You can see that that outline is just blended in just enough. Now go back to my size zero brush and I just want to use the wetness there and we'll be coming back for a bit more detail but let me do one more and this time this leaf is curving off over to the side so this presents a different challenge we'll begin with the more obvious underside one two three and then back home four clean brush clean wet brush Thank you. 
And the other nice thing about this adding in this darker colour is if you don't, don't feel like you quite got the points as sharp as you wanted, you can make the most of that. Now, you could just leave it like this um, and have a sort of smooth side, but I, I'm going to give us a bit more of a, a bit more of a challenge, and we're going to see bits of the spike, not all of it though. And by not sort of outlining that bit in the lighter green, it just gives that sense that there's some, some spikes sort of over the way, but we haven't seen them. Okay, so I'm just gonna fill in the other few leaves and then we'll get the berries done. Now we've got all our leaves painted in, it's time to focus on the berries. Um, we've got cadmium red here, and I'm also going to mix up a little bit of alizarin crimson. a nice deep sort of clarity colour and then I've got a little bit of French ultramarine blue to which I'm going to add right this seems mad but trust me here so I've got I've got a really sort of nice deep dark colour it's almost like an aubergine skin colour or eggplant skin it's really dark but it's got quite a red tone I've got alizarin crimson and then we've got cadmium red all on its own and yeah you thought these berries were just red well think again <laughs> they're shiny and they they pick up lots of light but they also pick up lots of color and, and shade so I'm going to begin by painting in a cadmium red berry that has got a little bit of unpainted space a little bit of unpainted space shine I'm going to paint in a few of those, just sort of clustered around around where the leaves burst out. And you can see I'm painting over the stem here. So it's just as well, even though there are areas of the stem I haven't painted at all to allow for berries. Um, in making sure that I painted it nice and dilute anyway means that I can layer up some red berries without too much trouble. Now what I'm doing is I'm just paint because I'm painting in these berries quite wet I'm just giving them a bit of time to settle in um, they're going to take a while to dry 100% and then I'm going to get a bit of alizarin crimson and I just want to begin to add just a little bit of that deeper colour to them, just dotting it in, and I'll go back to painting a few more berries, and paint another one in there. Uh, a colour like cadmium red is, is really bold and strong anyway so you don't need to paint it really concentrated or anything in fact it's much nicer if you do allow it to be a little bit dilute and then the little unpainted shine is, is less stark and don't worry if your berries suddenly bleed into each other or touch that's also absolutely fine but you want to get a, a slight sense of a um, little bit of distance between them so that you're not painting one big kind of blob of berries. Also I think painting in clusters in odd numbers is a better idea, like so. Okay so these new ones have painted in, they're slowly drying so they can have a little bit of the the pink, the alizarin and crimson. We walked past a 
a holly tree on our dog walk the other day and it was so striking couldn't believe it it's uh, it's actually quite uh, something to behold when you see a real holly tree full of berries and it's very cool and I am going to also paint one that's just sort of in behind so we just see half of it like that just something else to consider which is quite a fun way of making your painting really come alive berries at the top will actually still be still be drying but I'm going to now add in some of that really dark colour just to blend in we let those dry we can have just one last look at our leaves for a bit more detail on them I'm going to mix up a tiny bit more of this greeny blue mix so that's French ultramarine blue and sap green quite concentrated I'm going to take a size zero brush and what I want to do is just run that up the middle and then really clean my brush off, blot it a little bit and then I just want to blend the edge of that line out a bit and that gives us a really nice bit more definition. So I'm just doing one side of the ones I can see both sides of, clean off that brush carefully blend it out, don't overwork it turn it around a bit and now I know that the berries where they are I can just fill in that little bit of a gap And that just really helps bring out the central line of that leaf. Right, so I'm now going to get my really small brush and just begin to find the little gaps. Now you want to make sure your berries are dry for this, so I might just give them another minute and then do the last bits of detail. Things are nice and dry for the final stages, so what I am going to do with a clean wet brush I'm just wanting to make that little bit of shine a little softer so I'm just drawing in a tiny bit of the red colour to make the shine just a little softer and then so I've not really sort of disturbed the outside of the berries for that so that's all cool and now very gently just going to Paint in little bits of low lights onto the holly stem with a really small brush. I've got a four tenths brush here, so that's the four slash zero. That's what I mean when I say four tenths. stalk every now and then for your berries.
And then the last thing to do, um, holly berries do actually have a tiny weeny sort of uh, black spot on the end of them, like a little one like this. So you can just find your place you want to pop that. I've just put a bit of shadow mix. And there you have some lovely holly and berries. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. We've got a whole Christmas playlist if you're looking for more festive inspiration on this channel. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed this one, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, just hit subscribe and that little notification bell. Until next time, bye.